can run fast in any shoe. The question is, are you wearing a shoe that's eventually going to hinder how fast you can run or one that can help you sustain the type of training it takes to show up on race day and run your very best? What's going on guys? Uh, welcome back. We got an exciting shoe review today. As you ran the title, we have the Tempo Next Percent in the house. And as you also read, I've already ran in these, so they're not brand new, they're not fresh at all. Um, I actually already put 100 miles down on these guys. Um, now being one of the first people to kind of get these shoes in hand, I already saw that YouTube was already really saturated with the amount of people that were doing first impressions and like first run in these shoes. Uh, so I realized I would just wait before I released anything on them. Um, I would put some mileage down and really give you guys a good idea of what they're actually like to train in over a consistent period of time. So I ran over 100 miles consecutively for all my runs in these guys. Easy runs, short runs, long runs, uh, tempos, speed workouts, I did everything in these shoes. I do want to show kind of like the wear after 100 miles though, so I did the only thing a sensible person who already ran in a pair of shoes would do and I, I bought another pair. I have, I have four now. <laughs> now the big question on everybody's mind is, especially after seeing me with two pairs of these, is Alex, these are $200 a pair. How can you justify spending $200 on a pair of shoes? Here's the thing. <laughs> in the climate that we're already in right now, where a pair of race day shoes like the Alpha Flies goes for $275, this being their little brother at $200 actually might make sense. And here's the reason why. The Alpha Fly is designed to break down. It's not designed to last a long time. It's designed to give you those one or two really good races in them, and then the Zoom X foam degrades really quickly. Now, the biggest difference in what we see here with the Tempo is that this entire bottom section, this entire bottom portion of this heel cup is React foam instead of Zoom X foam. Now, React foam lasts forever. I mean, 500 miles plus you can easily get on React foam. However, we still have the full length of Zoom X foam going into the front of the forefoot. So now the question really becomes, if these can last, then are they worth it? Now going into buying these shoes, I was a little bit skeptical at first. I was already seeing a few people report that, um, especially the rubber around this section where uh, there's no foam between the, the AirPod and um, the foam itself, that tends to break down is what I've been hearing. And I'll put up a video here that I saw of people who um, actually had the rubber tear. This tear that they alleged happened after only 12 miles was in a pretty weak section. And from the looks of it, it looked like it had been cut. So I couldn't really believe that it's the shoe's fault itself. Probably something to do with the owner. Now, here's the thing. On this shoe, the toe box is absolutely massive. It's literally the size of my face. Um, here it is next to the turbo and you can see it's it's clearly a lot wider um, and of course that's to make room for these two big old airpods that um, they stuck in there now this polycarbonate plate that you see right up here it's that lime green color inside of the shoe it's not actually as stiff as the carbon fiber plate inside of the alpha fly they designed it that way so that you could actually still train and have to use a little bit more of your foot force rather than get to the race day and really not be prepared and having enough fortitude under your feet. Um, so they make you do a little bit more work than the Alpha Fly, but honestly coming from any other shoe, you really don't notice it. It still feels easier. This still makes the shoe incredibly stiff. The only bend I can get is out of the AirPod itself. But as far as you landing on one side of your foot, as soon as you hit the ground, it's gonna smack down. And it sounds like a tennis ball hitting the ground. This turbo can flex on its sides. And if you land on one side, it'll cushion you until you're flattened out. This one, the tempo, it really just smacks down. Now, what I found really cool about this though, is that over the few weeks that I wore it, I actually noticed that my foot was starting to realign itself a little bit better in order to run more efficiently. So it's like the shoe is helping to reprogram my running. Now this is only caused by the fact that the shoe helped me to realize that I was running so far out with my toe. Because when this massive tank is on your foot, you it's really hard to notice 
anything besides it. Because the strike pad was so big also, it forced me to land a little bit less on my heel and more directly on top of it because that's where a lot of the weight is as well. And after running in a dozen or so different types of shoes, this one stuck out like a sore thumb in the best way possible when it came to fixing my form. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the airbags. Now, this is not a new innovation by Nike. They've been using air technology in their shoes for years, but this shoe and the Alpha Fly are really the first time we are seeing it inside of a running shoe. So why is that? On top of that, you also see these these filaments that are filling the inside lining of the shoe itself. Those guys right there. This is also not new technology. In fact, I have a pair of Kevin Durant's, a pair of KDs from like four or five, maybe more years ago. Not new technology by any means. What the filaments do is that they limit the amount of distance between the top and the bottom of the air pod. So that limits the amount of stretch that can happen in it and it ultimately gives that energy back into your foot instead of shooting it straight into the ground. So what have I noticed when I actually run on them? They're they're so loud. This is literally what it sounds like when I run on the pavement. It, it sounds like tennis balls hitting the ground. It's the funniest thing ever. So even though it is a little ridiculous, I, I do like the way it feels, honestly. I wish there was a little bit more foam in the forefoot right here. It's just not, I feel like I could use a little bit more cushioning that I, I think I'm just being picky at this point. But if this stack of foam was a little bit higher, I think I'd be a little happier. So, after 100 miles, how much wear was there really on the shoe? Well, let's take a look. I'll be honest, there's not as much wear as I expected. I honestly thought I would be getting close to the bottom of the rubber in some places of the shoe, but I think the fact that it holds so laterally when you strike down really does help to maintain the longevity of it as well. Now, in terms of the filaments and how they held up, I honestly thought that the filaments were going to see a little bit more wear and tear. I thought the fact that I didn't strike perfectly down on my foot was going to mean that some of them were going to tear. Um, and so in comparing the new shoe and the old shoe though, that isn't the case. And I think that is due to the strength and numbers type of um, situation we see. There's so many filaments that they're all really leaning on one another. We're not going to see much wear because of that. So did the shoes make me faster? Are they worth it for you to get to make yourself faster? I don't really know, but here's what I do know. They did make me more efficient. They helped me fix my form. They were comfortable to run in, bouncy, and did in fact help me to avoid some injury. Now, once I got familiar with not rolling my ankles when I try to turn more than 110 degrees, these are great. I enjoyed every mile that I ran in these shoes, from easy runs to tempos to everything. Are they for every run? Absolutely not. On faster workouts, I would definitely choose to go in something like the Streak 7 or something a little bit lighter. It's just hard to feel fast with such a heavy shoe. Anything longer than 1K though, mild tempo, repeats, anything like that, I'd say this is a good workout shoe. But honestly, after 100 miles, I just didn't see enough of a change for me to be able to recommend these for $200. That's a really hefty price tag and there's definitely a lot of other shoes on the market that you can get that would do what I thought would be, you know, a pretty similar job. That is until I didn't run in them for the first time. What do I mean by that? So, my first run in a shoe that was not the Tempos was in these guys, uh, the Peg Turbo 2s. So, this is a much lighter shoe. Um, obviously, it has the same buildup of React foam on the bottom and then ZoomX foam kind of sandwiched in the middle between um, the upper. So, similar to the Tempo, but <laughs> Obviously one is a lot thicker than the other. When I stepped into the turbos for the first time after running 100 miles in the tempos, that's where the breaking point hit. Switching to a completely different type of trainer like the temp, bleh, <laughs> like the turbos, I'm getting these mixed up. Switching from <laughs> the tur tempo, <laughs> switching from the tempos to the turbos after 100 miles in these guys, this run was euphoric. It was incredible. And all the efficiencies and changes that I built up in these shoes transferred perfectly into these ones. It was incredible. I actually felt so good that I couldn't help myself and had to record immediately after I got home from that run. So take a look. I literally just got back from my run as you can see by the incredible amount of sweat on my body. Um, but this is just so important that I needed to capture this right now. Um, just ran almost the same exact run as I did yesterday um, in terms of mileage and like 
effort and everything. Um, and today was the first day that I was not wearing my, um, the, the next percents, the tempo next percents today. I actually wore my peg turbos. Um, and I, I, I can't tell you how smooth I felt. Like I wondered, did the tempos really make a difference? Like I was trying to think about, cause I put just put hundred miles on them. I was trying to think of, you know, ideas to talk about during the video. Um, and I think the most important point to bring up is the fact that it's not about while you're wearing the tempos, the result that you see, it's about after. And honestly, I get it now. That's why these shoes are worth $200. The true selling point is one that unfortunately you can't experience until after you've put enough work in on these shoes. When you're 50, 100 miles in deep on these guys and you're ready to throw on your alpha flies or spikes or flats for shorter races, you will feel so much faster just because of how these shoes have developed you. If that was gonna be me on a race day, I would have crushed any PR. I was lighter, I felt faster, it was great. And that's the magic of the turbos, the tempos, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but that's the magic of the tempos. That's where you buy these shoes. Yes, you buy them so that you can have incredible cushioning and great support and stability and, you know, have your running form fixed a little bit while you're running in them. But it's all about how they help you perform on race day, right? And if that's what we're going to be basing the shoe off of, hands down, it's worth it. While it's a fantastic... So, in the end, what do I think of the tempos? While these are fantastic trainers, and they notably help increase my running capacity, efficiency, and comfort, I think the true magic of them lies in race day and what they do for you as you prepare for the race. We all have to train for race day. If you're not getting the best training, how can you expect to perform the best? So should you buy these shoes? Maybe. If you have a race coming up sometime soon or later because COVID, yeah, you definitely should. Especially if you're a student or a medical professional right now because you are gonna get 20% off these from Nike.com. Um, just scroll all the way down to the bottom of the website and look for the promotions tab. If you can cop these for 160 bucks, no brainer, do it. I'll be keeping my second pair for the time when my first pair goes out on me. I'm excited to put more miles on these and I'm excited to see how it pays off. So thanks for uh, sticking with me through this video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you guys are first timers here, uh, I create a lot of other running content. I've made videos with some pros, some other YouTubers. So please, please, please go ahead and check some of those videos out. I would love your support or any feedback that you have for me. Leave me a comment if you feel like I missed something and you need a question answered and I would love to answer it for you. The three C's, I forgot the three C's. Don't forget the three C's, determination, perseverance, and hard work. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next one.